Hi and welcome to this tutorial. To get started with YouTube, go to the Chrome Apps Launcher in the top right corner. There you'll find access to all the different apps you have with your APS Google for Education account. Scroll down and find YouTube. Select YouTube. You are now at the YouTube homepage. To update or manage your channel, click the icon in the top right and select your channel. Here you can customize your channel. Go ahead and select customize channel. The icon at the top left of your banner is your Google account icon. So if you edit and change this, you'll actually change your icon for all of Google applications. So the icon in the top right will also change with the change to this icon. So I'm going to go ahead and leave my icon with our logo. To change the channel icon, you can simply click the pencil in the top right. You can edit links or edit channel art. I'm going to update the channel art. You can upload photos directly from your computer. You can go to a pre-selected gallery of photos that are free to use through YouTube, or you can go to your photos, which are photos that are uploaded and collected in photos.google.com. I'm going to go ahead and select EdTech logos and icons, or actually EdTech 2019-20. And here are some photos from this last school year where we've done many presentations and PD events. I'm going to go ahead and select one one of these photos to use for our banner. By clicking on the photo, you'll get a preview of your desktop TV and mobile applications and how the banner will look on those different formats. You can adjust and crop the photo by clicking this button down here. I'm satisfied with the way it's cropped currently. I'm going to go ahead and click select. Your channel background or banner is now updated. Um, here below that you can view the, your channel as yourself or as a visitor or returning subscriber. You can also access your videos, playlists, channels, discussions, and about. You can also adjust the settings. Here in settings you can uh, keep all your prescription, your subscriptions private. You can also keep all save playlists private. Um, you can customize your layout and so forth. So there's a few different options you can do here. I'm going to go ahead and click save. To get started with managing videos, playlists, and uploading videos, you want to go to YouTube Studio. To go to YouTube Studio, click the top right icon and select YouTube Studio. Here is your channel dashboard. You'll get the lady, latest video performance for your channel or videos that you've uploaded. You'll also receive news from YouTube. You'll get channel analytics and the summary of those analytics and your top videos this week. Over on the left, you want to select videos to manage your videos. Below is a list of videos for videos that I've uploaded previously. If you click on live, You'll have information on different live events you've done in the past. I'm going to go ahead and go back to uploads. Notice here you'll get information on visibility, restrictions, date, view, comments, likes and dislikes, um, all the different features and settings that you have for each video. For videos already currently uploaded, you can simply click on the, the details uh, to, to edit the video or edit the change or make changes to the video itself, including the title, description, tags and uh, visibility as well as audience you can also select a thumbnail that will preview when the video is displayed or embedded in a website i'm going to go ahead and go back to my channel videos in the top left you also have analytics for that that video specifically you also have access to comments 
and uh, you can also view this video on YouTube by clicking this it'll go it'll open up a new window you can also in the options edit the, just the title of the description get a shareable link which is really useful promote the video which we, we won't discuss um, in terms of promotion and monetization for education purposes you can download the actual file and you can delete it forever to upload a new video I'm gonna simply click the button at the top right that says create and I'm gonna select upload videos I'm gonna go ahead and select files you can drag and drop files from your finder window or or um, any type of window that where you can see your files like this you can drag and drop into that screen I'm gonna go ahead and find a video that I can drag and drop into this area and I'm going to find a video quickly here that we can upload so you can't see it down here but there we go I'm gonna click open now the video will start uploading automatically and now you can give it a proper title I'm gonna leave it the same because this video is is a simple video which is an outro or the end video for that we tag on to existing videos so I'm gonna leave that there you can give a description of your video and remember these descriptions um, are also used as metadata for searchability so the title and the description will be used when you search in Google for your video notice that since you started uploading it it automatically generated a video link or a URL you can actually copy that to paste it into a Google site or share it with colleagues via email you can also select a screen since this video only has the APS logo all the screens look the same but what it'll do is capture different parts of your video so you can select that by automatic by by its um, capturing of different parts of the video which are typically at the beginning middle and end if the file or p image doesn't work you can actually upload an image that works better um, you won't be able to, you'll be able to upload an image as soon as the video is completely uploaded um, but you can select like a, thum a thumbnail like this to add to your video as the default screen so when you're embedded when your video is embedded in the site users will see this but I'm gonna go ahead and select the APS logo because that's what is in the video I'm gonna go ahead and select a playlist I'm gonna add it to test you can also add it to a new playlist so I'm creating a new playlist I'm gonna click create and then I'm gonna select that playlist as well along with the last playlist that I selected and click done <clears throat> excuse me this video is not made for kids if you select this feature then you'll have to make other settings and changes to your settings so if you click more options again we're not going to go over pay promotion for education purposes you can add tags again tags is further metadata for her for searchability so typically when we upload videos we'll add Albuquerque Public Schools APS educational technology ed tech um, and then whatever the subject matter whether it be Google Drive doc slides sites classroom etc classroom it will give all the appropriate tags to make it a little bit more searchable when people are looking for your video online you can select a language my channel defaults to selecting English as the default language and um, it also what you also want to do is tag your video for um, or actually rather select a um, category for your video which it defaults to education um, down here you can select your different comments and ratings visibility so you can allow all comments uh, hold potentially inappropriate comments for review hold all comments for review or disable comments typically I disable comments or hold all comments for review so you have more control over that space since this channel isn't for monetary purposes or any paid promotions um, I'm not trying to drive marketing and traffic to the site via comments or likes or uh, engagement online so I'm just gonna do this for educational purposes notice if I scroll back up to the top and select yes it's made for kids then when I go down to the bottom all comments and ratings are disabled by default so anytime it's the the audience is children or students 
um, YouTube will strip out all the all the comments and the ratings piece of video so it can be focused on just the content itself and not any type of distractions with comments or um, or ratings and such so um, <clears throat> I'm gonna leave this here for education purposes select kids I'm gonna go ahead and I have my title my description and all the different appropriate settings that I want for this video I'm gonna click next here you can add an end screen and you can also add cards. So adding cards or end screens, um, you can only do this if they're for adults and it would be for sequencing videos. So say you have a series of videos you uploaded like three, you can add cards or end screens that help end users navigate to the next video if you have a series of videos. Now that it's for students, it doesn't give me this option to add this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. And here is your publishing setting. So. You can publish as private, so only people that you choose can see your video. So basically, you would um, give access to those folks to watch the video. You can do unlisted, where it's not searchable or in any kind of a database. It's just simply lives on YouTube, but not searchable, or people can't find it online. But you can share a link with somebody, and they can navigate to that if they have a link. And then, of course, there's public. So public is typically what we do. To allow all students and families to find videos if you're making a video for that community um, you can also schedule a video to go public you can also set an instant premiere where you schedule the video to premiere at a certain time so i'm going to just make it public i'm going to hit publish if you have longer videos you'll get a screen here that that, that pops up next that says it's still uploading so you can actually publish your video and complete all of these steps even if the video is still uploading to YouTube. So say it's a half hour to an hour long video. Um, it'll still work and process that way, but you'll get you'll be able to embed it, share it, or share the video link even though it's not fully uploaded. Um, just when folks visit it, they'll just get an error saying that it's not done uploading. In this case, the video is only five seconds, so it uploads quickly and everything's done and complete. So typically I like to copy the video link to my clipboard when I close this so I can simply paste that video link inside of my Google site to share the video or embed the video on my site. Now that the video is here, you'll see that it is showing all the different attributes that you set previously inside the settings when you were uploading the video. It also shows the publish date. Now let's take a look at playlists. To get, to get to your playlist, simply in, in YouTube Studio, click the playlist link in the left navigation. And here are your different playlists. So to create a new playlist, you simply click New Playlist. You can give it a title here. Let me spell this correctly. You can do the settings for public, unlisted, or private. So I'm going to make it public. I'm going to create the playlist. <clears throat> now, when you're in this section here, you'll notice you'll get this uh, no video kind of thumbnail. That's because we haven't added any videos here. So no videos in this playlist yet. So to add a video, you have to click these three dots, which isn't the most intuitive thing. But if, once you click the three dots, you'll see an option, options here to add people to your playlist so they can manage the playlist with you. So if you want to create a channel and multiple playlists with several teachers, you can do that here. You can also open additional playlist settings or delete the playlist, but I want to add a video. So here you can add a single video or you can add multiple videos. You can add a video by searching for a video that you know the search, that you know how to find through search terms on YouTube that exists in this public already. Uh, make sure that if you're adding videos here that they're appropriate for students, um, for their age and, and for uh, and for um, them be children. The, typically, these are the videos that you um that you would have to pre-vet to add so you can find those online or you can paste a specific url of a video that was shared so like i copy my url so here's my video or you can simply click the tab at the top that says your youtube videos and i'm going to select the video that i like but typically play this have more than one video so when you're adding a video you can actually add multiple videos here so i'm going to add three videos here and click add videos You can simply drag and drop these videos to order the videos in a specific order. 
So I'm going to do introduction, video, and uh, ending video or outro. In your settings, you can allow embedding or you can disable embedding. So if you want folks to be able to embed your playlist, um, by default this is on you, but you can turn that off. Um, you can turn on this feature, which adds new videos to the top of the playlist instead of to the bottom of the playlist. So that's all that this feature does here. Um, in advanced settings, it gives you a few more options where you can play all, share. Um, you can go back to those playlist settings. You can add videos. Um, you can change the privacy or the ordering to, to uh, date added or most popular. So there's some different more advanced features there. You can auto add, create auto add rules. You can collaborate. Um, collaborators can add videos to your playlist. You can enable this once you have collaborators. Uh, but it just gives you some more features here. And here you're in the legacy version of YouTube. So to get back to that nice looking YouTube studio space, you have to click your top menu and then go back into YouTube studio. All the same features that we discussed in the new playlist that we created can be done to existing playlists. So you can actually go to previous playlists by clicking the link or clicking the edit button on the right. So by clicking the link, it'll actually bring you to the space where you can still edit it. So you can actually edit the title and the description. And it actually took me to the wrong playlist, which is interesting. So if you want to edit like test, I selected edit on the right. And now I'm in the test playlist, so you can actually update the name here. You can update the description. And remember, all of the if with, with really good titles and descriptions, it makes the YouTube playlist and channel more searchable and easily to find easily found by users searching for videos on YouTube. To get back to YouTube Studio, remember you gotta click your top right icon and select YouTube Studio. On the left menu over here, you can access analytics. This will give you all the information to find data and information on your videos and how many times videos have been watched, seen, uh, time they spent on your videos and how many subscribers you have. You can also look at your uh, overall reach, engagement and audience. These are social media tools to help uh, build your channel up uh, if you wanna gain more subscribers and uh, a really strong presence online. Down here at the bottom is comments in the left menu. This is where you would um, review existing comments that are held for review. I think we covered this in the settings when we were uploading the video and also where YouTube create, um, collects likely spam. So since I don't have any comments enabled on any of my videos, I, I don't see anything here. On the bottom it, left menu is subtitles. So to add subtitles, you can actually upload a script or add subtitles. To do that, you first need to set the language of your video. So I, it automatically by default sets every video to English um, since that's my browser settings for Chrome. Um, here are some random clips from an EdTech event, including some donuts, but I haven't assigned a um, language to it, but it defaults to English. But once you add a language, Um, you can simply select it, which you can select the default and it'll add it. And then once you add the language, it'll give you the option to click add and upload captions. So here you can upload a word file or a document file that has information uh, pertaining to the subtitles or actual the actual subtitles itself. You can transcribe and auto sync and you can create new subtitles for closed captioning. So by clicking the add button, um, to the right of the language selected, it'll let, allow you to add subtitles to your videos. 
and that is found through the drop down menu of each video so again to get there you click on subtitles you select the video by clicking the drop down menu and you click add under subtitles I guess I could also mention in subtitles that you can crowdsource subtitles so there's a feature you can turn on where you allow community um, the community to help translate your videos and create closed captionings so this is a way to kind of crowdsource those features um, you can also see your published subtitles and your drafts and sorry I didn't cover this earlier but there's some other detailed features there with subtitles other settings that you can uh, that you have access to in your YouTube channel you can access those through YouTube studio by clicking the left settings uh, gear icon in the bottom left navigation um, this is for monetization of your site with or channel which we're not going to discuss you can also go to channel settings where you can update basic information about your channel so this is my personal APS account it says my name um, you can add some keywords in here for more searchability you can also select the country in which your channel resides. In this case, I'm in the United States, so I could select that if I wanted to. You can also go back and customize your channel um, and, and update those different settings that we covered earlier. Um, in your advanced settings, you can also select um, you, you can also select the setting to review this setting for every video, or you can default all your videos to be for kids or for adults for the audience. You can also update your branding by choosing an image that will pop up and hover over every video on the bottom right. So um, for educational technology, we have this EdTech icon. So I can actually add that here and add it to all our videos, which you do in our main channel. Um, so this is, this is to add other features and other verification statuses of your channel. I'm not going to go into that too much. You can leave it by default because it's uh, enabled there, but you can explore that a little bit further if you want to get into the granularity of your channel settings. You can also change the upload defaults. So you can automatically give every video that you upload a basic title and description and also visibility settings along with tags. This will help streamline um, updating these different areas of your videos as you upload. So you can just you know play something like classroom video or you know elementary school video and then a simple description you can also select public and then add all the appropriate text so every time you upload a video it'll automatically import those in the event settings um, you can actually take that a little bit further with the YouTube license the category you can actually default which I did um, which since we're an education account it defaults to education I actually don't have this set uh, but since we're an education domain it automatically sets all my videos to education so um, I'm going to go ahead and set that anyways. Um, you can allow community contributions and visibility. You can do all those things and permissions on the left here. You can give permissions to your channel. So you can invite people to collaborate on your channel and your videos. And in the community section, you can add a moderator um, for, for comments. You can add approved users to your site. So when you have private videos, they're able to access your videos. Um, you can also see hidden users. Um, you can also black, uh, block words, add block words, block links, etc. Um, you can also take a look at the default to make any changes there. So typically here is where you manage your comments. So I would hold all comments review just in case. If so, if you make videos for adults, it at least holds all the comments for review. And then if you select um, for students or children, it'll automatically block comments. So this is kind of a safety feature for um, visibility and, and good management of your content and um, feedback on your content. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And everything is now saved. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go back to dashboard. Um, I, um, and again, your dashboard is kind of where you house all different information on your video, on your videos and channel. And you can get all the information here in terms of how many people watch your videos, what's the most popular and a summary for the last 28 days. 
Um, the only features I will not cover in this tutorial is go live. Go live, you can actually go live where you can make a public link where people can watch you uh, speak and have dialogue with a larger, broader community outside of the domain or an actual video. And this is only enabled through a webcam by default. So if you have a webcam on your computer, you can actually go live and speak to your to your folks that you're trying to communicate with through a YouTube video. This could be for your family. This could be for your school. This could be some sort of online live event. Um, if you want to actually share your screen in Go Live, you have to get a screen reader that captures your screen and then feeds that video into YouTube. There's some open source ones. Uh, I think the acronym is OBS. It's one that I use to, when I've done go lives where I want to capture my screen. Um, but it, it actually takes, uh, you actually have to take some time to download this tool and then configure it to work with YouTube and then capture your screen and stream your screen live to YouTube and then go live with YouTube. So it's actually quite complicated if uh, you're a novice with all this. If you need further help, you can contact educational technology at edtech at aps.edu and that is it for the tutorial thanks for watching